Thank you very much. I've been in Beijing uh, for four years until late July and coming here in the early August. So uh, leaving Beijing, that air pollution, and then the coming to the lovely Los Angeles, Southern California. But today I'm back to China and then the talk to talk about this uh, difficulty between the two countries. And if you read the newspapers all over the world, even in Japan and even in China and in the United States too, the, it's a kind of rivalry between the Japan and China and the conflict and so on. But uh, so I'd like to show the actual the situation, actual, the, it's a, a lot of cooperation and a lot of uh, working together. And so to see, to show you that the actual status of the two countries of now and then the, what should we expect uh, in the future. So this is, uh, so the, I, I took this title, Japan China Update. So I'd like to start with a brief background. 2012, September, Japanese government uh, purchased some of Senkaku Islands. And uh, the reason for this purchase is that uh, at that time, the, this year, the governor of the municipality of Tokyo said in Washington, D.C., uh, when he participated in uh, the uh, think tank's uh, press conference, and that uh, the municipality of Tokyo is going to purchase the, some of Senkaku Islands. And then the, the government side, it was quite clear if the municipality of Tokyo uh, purchases the, the, those islands, that can create a lot of problems with China. So uh, in September, the government itself purchased uh, from the private owner of those islands. And then that was for the, for the government side, the GOJ side. It's for the keep the quiet situation east in the East China Sea. But actually what happened was a huge demonstration. This is the, in front of our embassy in Beijing. And if you notice that the, the, this uh, Mao Zedong, and it, that's quite unusual. That the demonstrator shows Mao Zedong is really uh, symbolic uh, for us and for Chinese leaders too. And this picture is Qingdao. And, but not the center of the Qingdao city, it's the Qingdao's new developing area for the industry, that's the industrial park called Huandao. And this is that they put fire to the Japanese car dealers. And this is also uh, Qingdao and the Huandao area. And this is just, it's a huge shopping mall and these are riots. And it's not even the demonstrators anymore. They rushed into the, this shopping mall and robbed and smashed and demolished. And so, so it's the same that the, they put fire and just uh, this kind of act of violence uh, happened in Qingdao and also in Changsha, the Hunan province. And uh, Changsha, there's a Heibado, Pinghe Tan uh, department store. It was smashed and uh, destroyed. And then the government of China started to send their uh, maritime surveillance ship to the East China Sea. And you see, this is a Japan Coast Guard. And it looked quite similar, but this is a Chinese ship. And they are, uh, so when the Chinese ship is coming, then the, our Coast Guard is to uh, intersect the uh, way. And those time, that time, the China still didn't have the Coast Guard yet, but afterwards, this maritime surveillance uh, organization was uh, merged with other uh, organizations, agencies, and now they call it China Coast Guard. But so this, the government started this, and then the, the people were quite angry and could, couldn't stop that. And then, uh, that year, November, there was the party congress, 18th party congress. So, uh, what's the, uh, the significance of this Mao Zedong's picture during the demonstration? That, that shows that the people are not quite, not satisfied with the today's leadership. And then, for this kind of unsatisfaction that the new leadership led by uh, Xi Jinping has to face. And uh, exactly, basically at the same time that the Shinzo Abe re-elected as a prime minister. And this is quite significant too, because 
after, after war history of Japanese politics, Shinzo Abe was the, the, the second person, but uh, actually the first after fifth, almost 50 years uh, of Japanese political history that uh, made the re-election to the prime minister. And afterwards, he was quite stable, and then the, this December he will welcome the second anniversary. And then, the, so now the former Prime Minister Noda went away. And former, uh, pre, actually, the president was still uh, Hu Jintao, but the party secretary changed to the Xi Jinping uh, on the party's congress. So those two leaders have to face the uh, how to deal with it. And then the, the next year, January, we, we had a kind of good uh, news uh, that uh, Kometo, Kometo is a, a one ruling party of Japan. The ruling party, so two ruling parties, one is LDP, very huge Liberal Democratic Party, and rather small Kometo. And Yamaguchi is the leader of Kometo and also parliamentary member a member of the parliament, and he came, and then he met Xi Jinping. So this was, this showed a kind of the beginning of the uh, reconciliation or some uh, harmonized uh, activity. But then the same month, we were shocked that the uh, Chinese military ship uh, fire, uh, locked on the Japanese self-defense force. One was to the helicopter, one was another a Japanese uh, self-defense force navy uh, ship, and it was 19th and 30th. But this created another tension in the East China Sea. And, but still, that all through the year of 2013, a kind of recovery of bilateral exchange. So that even after that uh, radar locked on, this was the uh, he, this is former Speaker of the House of the Japan and the parliamentary member, uh, Mr. Yokomichi, uh, who met Yu Zhongshan. Yu Zhongshan is the uh, standing committee member of the Politburo, so that is the fifth in the Chinese ladder of the leadership. The top is Xi Jinping, second is uh, the Premier, uh, Li Keqiang, and the third is Zhang Dejiang, who is the head of the NPC, National People's Congress, and the fourth is this guy, the Yu Zhongshan, who is leading the CCCP. Uh, consultation uh, body of the part, uh, consultation body, and then the so the standing committee member can see the Japanese politician, and also that the, this is uh, Newsweek in Japan, and then the uh, it's reporting the Chinese travelers, Chinese tourists are back to Japan, and so it's the kind of the people's two people exchange is back, and also this is uh, this. Eon, in 2013, they celebrated the a kind of anniversary of the green activity in China. So they put the 10, what, 10 million uh, uh, trees in China, and for that celebration, they uh, asked two singers. Very, uh, she is very famous that uh, she issued the uh, jazz album, and then the, it hit the number of, uh, together with. Pink Martini, Pink Martini, and then it was uh, uh, the top chart, uh, the actual top of the jazz chart of the iPad or the, uh, the not iPad, but the uh, Apple Store. Yeah, and then the, so these two sisters came to China and uh, they made the uh, recital in Chunshan uh, Music Hall. This was significant. Why? The because the after the 2012 September, we could not have any that kind of huge uh, cultural activity in Beijing. There, so the police were quite afraid of the people's or the mass uh, anger, and the police didn't allow us, and of course the municipality doesn't allow us, and all, uh, even the embassy and all other uh, private companies could, could not make that kind of cultural activity in the open space. And so we just continued in the embassy, that, uh, some multi-functional room. But this time, the, it was to, uh, September. Already in September in 2013, this kind of huge the cultural event could 
uh, we could make it in Chongshan Konya. Chongshan Konya is just beside the, the Forbidden City, the center of Beijing. And then, so we expected this kind of uh, momentum continues. But in that year, the, to the end of that year, uh, there was another movement. First one by China, they created the ADIS, ADIS, the Air Defense Identification Zone. And by, so they announced this Air Defense Identification Zone. And what's the Air Defense Identification Zone? So after crossing, that, getting into that zone without notification, usually it is intercepted, the, the aircraft is intercepted by the military airplane. Uh, for example, Japan, this red line is Japan's edit, so we put it in the 60s and it still continues to apply today. And this blue line is Taiwan's edit. And this black line is Korea's. And China did not announce the edit or did not put edit to the East China Sea, but this November, they suddenly announced this is their edit. And uh, we were quite, uh, we also made a protest and we opposed, we opposed because this uh, so-called Chinese artist includes the, our territory, Senkaku, and also the, the, the substance of artists is, for our view, it's against the international law. That, uh, uh, that what means that it was a little too much uh, as a substance of artists because China requested all the aircraft, uh, the identification and the route and then the uh, information about the aircraft getting into Addis. And then if there is no information that the China is going, was going to take the, the defense activity by military plane. And usually the normal, because there are very many uh, Civil aviation activity between the two countries, including Korea and Taiwan. Now Taiwan and China also have a lot of uh, the flights, and then the, they are not notifying because uh, notifying Japan because of this addis, and they are not notifying Taiwan because of this addis. But this time, China asked or ordered the civil aviation flight to notify the identification route and information about their flight because of this artist. So we thought that it was a little too much. And then the, it, that created a lot of tension. And also the, the another point is that the, e, the, in the East China Sea, they are already full of tension on the surface, the Chinese ships and Japanese ships. But then, so n now with the creation of artists, so-called artists, that they are creating the, another tension in the, in the air. So it's a three-dimensional tension, a creation of the uh, tension. So we oppose that. And then, the, but in December of that year, there was another tension happened because of the, our Prime Minister uh, Abe's visit to Yasukuni Shrine. And the Yasukuni Shrine was visited by Japanese Prime Minister very often after the war. And, but after 1985, it always created a kind of diplomatic problem between Japan and China. And then the, this time, uh, uh, the Abe's visit, shrine visit, created very cold moments uh, between the two countries. But I'd like to point out that this time, that the uh, 2004, so the uh, shrine visit was the end of the la last year, but this year, oh, even though there had been the cold period between the two countries until mid-March, there was a big significant difference uh, from the 2012 experience. 2012 is that the Senk purchase of Senka Islands and then the huge demonstration and the acts of violence. But this time, no demonstration. So some people said that there would be a demonstration and acts of violence. And I, in the embassy, I said that oh, there would be no, uh, and, uh, because uh, as a I did the uh, director of China Desk in the Foreign Ministry for two years and afterwards. 
I did the political minister in the embassy. So, so five years continuously dealing with the uh, Japan-China affairs. And those days, it was a Koizumi administration. And the prime minister Koizumi visited six times. And there had been no demonstration. So it is not the case of the demonstration or acts of violence. And actually, there had been no uh, demonstration. And so there was no riot uh, mobbing mobbing the Japanese business. And also, there was no direct influence from, for the, over the economic relations between the two countries. And the people's exchange did not suffer. This is really big, and uh, I'll show you that actually what. The, this is the tourism, Japan-China tourism, and this is the 2012 case. That the September, uh, so until the summertime, it was really driving Japanese tourism and many Chinese people visited, uh, but suddenly September dropped and uh, hit the bottom up. Uh, blue one is the actual volume, and red one, uh, red line is that uh, the increase and the decrease uh, the by percentage. Uh, then it recovered significantly, and then the 2013 in December, uh, well, actually, it was dropped, but it's still uh, more than uh, half uh, higher than the, the uh, numbers of the last year, and it goes on to this year. And, this, and actually, since last September, the, the embassy and the consul generals of Japan in China issued the record high monthly visa numbers uh, continuingly. So for September is the, the highest in the September history. October is the highest in the October history. So very many Chinese people are now visiting Japan. And well, it is not the case of Japan's visit visitors to China because of the, uh, it did not come back yet. But uh, uh, why is it so? This is so significant because in September's case, the 1912, uh, 2012, that the Chinese travel agency didn't organize a tour group to Japan. So they just stopped almost half a year. Even some, the group of people would like to visit Japan in, all together, but they refused to organize the, uh, those tour groups. So that was the case in the 2012, but it did not happen this time. So it was a really good sign for the, the, the bilateral relations. And Japanese visitors to China didn't come back. And, and uh, so this is the September, and still like this, and uh, uh, keeping the red line is below zero. And, uh, but still, we have two, uh, 200, uh, 28 or 25 billion Japanese are visiting China. So this year, we are expecting 2 million Chinese uh, to, uh, tourists, to uh, visitors to Japan, and next year, we hope that the Chinese visitors to Japan will surpass the number of the Japanese visitors to, to China. Then, what about trade? Trade is really difficult to uh, analyze, but the 2013 uh, case did not make make a big difference, and it is clear and. I think that the trade figure is rather stable. So we are keeping the yearly volume is 312 billion US dollars between the two countries. And China is number one trade partner for Japan, and Japan is number two trade partner to China. And this is very stable, and I think that we are still the level of the 300 billion US dollars. And then the old sales. This is uh, also significant because of the, the, in uh, October 2012, it, dropped, uh, it hit the bottom. And this is not because of this, uh, well, of course, uh, because of the relations. But uh, in Xi'an, at the time of demonstration, in Xi'an, there was a huge demonstration. Uh, one driver, female driver, uh, female driver, attacked by a demonstrator, and then the heavily injured and uh, uh, disabilitated. 
because she was driving Japan brand car. The Japan brand car was create, uh, built in China and built by the Chinese workers and the company is China, but brand was Japan. Uh, but only for that reason she was attacked and, and heavily injured. So then afterwards, it took some, some time to get back to the normal level, but already here, the September uh, 2013, the volume is recovered and then the, well, September is 175, 175 points higher than the last year and because last year was very bad. So uh, this is the total share uh, in China. That's the uh, uh, October case. That's Japan's uh, market share only 7.6%. Uh, that was the bottom. But in uh, April 2015, 14, it recovered till 16.2%. But still the German car is very strong. And uh, so that's uh, today's China situation. And not only in this economic field, there had been the political uh, exchange between the two countries. And uh, the top picture was Hu Deping, uh, based in Japan. And Hu Deping is uh, the eldest son of uh, Hu Yaobang. Hu Yaobang was the leader of China before the uh, Tiananmen incident. And Still, uh, many Chinese people, the intellectuals and the young people, uh, have a kind of the affection to the Hu Yaobang. And Hu Deping is also a, a kind, has that legacy. And he visited Japan. This is the picture he met the foreign minister Kishida. And, but also, he also met uh, for, uh, Prime Minister Abe. And then the, the bottom picture is that the Yohei, uh, Yohei Kono, who is the uh, former speaker of the house and the former leader of the uh, Liberal Democratic Party. And also he was very famous with a Kono statement on the uh, comfort women case. And uh, then he visited as leading the uh, business leaders. And there he met uh, Wang Yang. Wang Yang is a vice premier and he's not the level of the standing committee member of the Politburo, but he's just a Politburo member. But I'm quite sure he's going up at the next party congress. So it was a good sign. And then uh, Governor Masasoe of the municipality of Tokyo visited China uh, and also met Wanya. So the significance of this is that the municipality of Tokyo is a sister city, city relations with Beijing. But 18 years, there was no actual uh, visit by the governor of the municipality of Tokyo uh, with the invitation from Beijing city because uh, the governor had been the Shintaro Ishihara who tried to purchase the Senkaku Islands. And then the, uh, he rejected, the, for him, the city of Beijing could not send the invitation. So at the time of the uh, Beijing Olympic game, the Ishihara came to Beijing, but uh, it was not uh, with the invitation from the city of Beijing. But this time, the city, Beijing city invited him. And then the, he met Wang Yang, so the Politburo member. So it was good. And then the, in May, the, the former foreign minister, Komura, visited China with a group of the friendly parliamentary members group. And this time he met Zhang Dezhan. So Zhang Dezhan is a number three. So that means that the number four is okay, number three is okay, and left uh, only two people, the top two, the, the Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang. And this is Noda's meeting with Yu Zhangsheng, and this is the business leader's meeting with Li Yuanchao. Li Yuanchao is a vice president, and uh, he is at the uh, Fruit Bureau member, but uh, he's going up next at the next party congress, I think. And oh, this is me with Xi Jinping. <laughs> this is at the uh, Sika Shanghai Summit. It was a, a very different, different, uh, strange name. The conference on interaction, interaction and confidence 
building measures in Asia. And it was a summit meeting in Shanghai in May. And then the, uh, so it was participated by Putin from Russia and Afghanistan, uh, Karzai from Afghanistan, Maliki from Iraq, <coughs> and Ban Ki-moon from the United Nations. And of course, uh, the Nazarbayev of uh, Kazakhstan. And originally, this meeting was done by the Central Asian countries. And afterwards, it developed in the Turkey and the Russia and then the China. And it, it's a global base and it, it's called uh, Sika Summit and then the, uh, in May. And then, uh, today, my wife is here. And then the, so this is a picture with me and my wife and uh, Xi Jinping and Pan Li Yuan. Pan Li Yuan was a great singer in China. Everybody loves her. Then, uh, June, in June, uh, Minister Wota, uh, Transportation Minister visited China, and he met uh, Liu Yantong. Liu Yantong is a uh, vice premier and Portuguese bureau member. And so th I think this is the first time in the Abe administration one minister, actual minister, visited China. And they accepted and they met, uh, he met the vice premier there. And later, there are many activities, but uh, for example, former Prime Minister Fukuda visited China and met Xi Jinping in July. And foreign ministers meeting uh, held in Myanmar and also quite recently in New York. Uh, but there have been no pictures, no photos. So that shows a lot of sensitivity in China. And of course, the, for the Japanese politicians, they would like to show that uh, they are meeting with the Chinese side. But uh, I think the Chinese side uh, doesn't allow any photo to be released. So, uh, but actually, uh, the Japanese politician met uh, Xi Jinping and the foreign ministers uh, two countries are uh, meeting each other. And also at the, uh, uh, the working level, there was a high level consultation on maritime affairs. So quite recently in Qingdao. And because the Senkaku issue is the rather hot issue between the two countries. So the, we need to have the consultation on the maritime affairs. And this is the second round. But after two years or two and a half years of absence of, of this kind of consultation. So and, uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, Japanese diet opened. And then the, uh, on the opening remarks by the prime minister, Prime Minister Abe uh, also referred to the Sino-Japan friendship, Japan-China friendship, and it's his will to have the uh, Japan-China summit at the time of APEC. And so, what comes next? And uh, Japanese side, of course, the, we would like to have the summit meeting between Xi Jinping and Shin Shinzo Abe at the time of APEC in November next month. And it is a big... Uh, Summit. So, uh, for China, the Wang Yi, the foreign minister, said that uh, at the time of the National People's Congress this uh, March, that this year's Chinese diplomacy have two summits. One is Sika summit in Shanghai that was May, and the APEC summit in November. And it is quite sure. I'm quite sure that China would like to show that uh, Xi Jinping's other world leader and then he can handle the very complicated things in Asia. But if he refused to see another leader in Asia, so it's not really good for him, his image, it, it will not good for his image. But even so, he has to take care of his own people. And then the a kind of ang if anger in, exists in the mass of Chinese people, then he cannot meet. So, uh, we are open. The Abe always said that we are open for the summit meeting. So, uh, what comes next? The the focus is on that the, whether there will be the uh, summit meeting between the two countries, the Abe and the Xi Jinping, in next month in Beijing. So that is my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>